Good morning, everyone. It's great to see you all at the eighth meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. Together, we're starting a new year with renewed resolve to support the brave defenders of Ukraine. And I know that this meeting will only strengthen our unity and our drive. We're honored to be joined virtually today by President Zelensky of Ukraine, and so we'll hear from him in just a few minutes. We're also joined here in person by my good friend, Ukrainian Minister of Defense, Oleksiy Reznikov. And let me also welcome Ukraine's Deputy Chief of Defense, Lieutenant General Moyshuk. It's great to have all these brave leaders with us. Let's give them all a round of applause. Now, I know that everyone here was deeply saddened by the helicopter crash on Wednesday just outside of Kyiv that took the lives of more than a dozen people, including Ukraine's interior minister. So let me exp express our deep, deepest condolences to our Ukrainian friends here today and to all of the families in mourning after this tragic, uh, tragic crash. We're meeting at a turbulent time, but if you look around this table, you can see the resolve and the unity of this contact group. Some 50 countries have stepped up to help Ukraine defend itself and deter future threats. When Putin launched his reckless and unprovoked invasion 11 months ago, he thought that Ukraine would just collapse. And he thought that the world would just look away. But Putin didn't count on the courage of the Ukrainian people. And he didn't count on the skill of the Ukrainian military. And he didn't count on you, on everyone Keep up our momentum and our resolve, and we need to dig even deeper. This is a decisive moment for Ukraine in a decisive decade for the world. So make no mistake, we will support Ukraine's self-defense for as long as it takes. Now, we know that Russia remains bent on aggression and conquest. And Russian forces have increased their horrific attacks, killing many innocent Ukrainians. We saw the cruelty of Russia's war of choice again just a few days ago in the city of Dnipro. A Russian missile strike ripped into an apartment building, killing at least 46 civilians, including children. The Kremlin's forces continue to bombard Ukraine's cities and citizens. And Russian forces have targeted power plants, theaters, sports arenas, and centers of Ukrainian history and culture. Russia's attacks are designed to break the spirit of Ukraine. But they have failed. And the people of Ukraine have inspired the world. And meanwhile, Russia is running out of ammunition. And it's suffering significant battle losses and is turning to its few remaining partners to resupply its tragic and, un and unnecessary invasion. And even Iran and North Korea won't admit that they're supplying Russia. Just compare that to the groundswell of support for free and sovereign Ukraine represented in this room. I'm especially proud that the United States has greatly increased its security assistance to Ukraine Last month, the United States announced that we will provide a Patriot Air Defense battery and associated munitions. We also included Bradley Infantry Fighting Vehicles and other armored vehicles in that major package of security assistance. And today, I'm pleased to announce another major new round of U.S. security assistance that helps to meet Ukraine's most urgent battlefield needs. This new security assistance package is worth up to $2.5 billion, and it's one of the largest yet. It brings total U.S. security assistance to Ukraine to more than $26.7 billion since Russia's unprovoked invasion last February. 
Our new package provides even more air defense capabilities to help Ukraine defend its cities and its skies. And that includes NASAM's munitions and eight air defense, Avenger air defense systems. This new assistance package also help, helps meet Ukraine's urgent need for armor and combat vehicles. So we're providing uh, 59 more Bradleys, 90 Strikers, 53 MRAPs, and 350 up-armored Humvees. And this new package will also provide thousands more rounds of artillery. So the United States remains determined to lead and to do our part to help Ukraine defend itself. Now the United States will also provide Ukrainian forces with combined arms and joint maneuver training. And this training will work in concert with efforts by the European Union and others. And as the United States increases our support on multiple fronts, we're also prioritizing accountability with cooperation from the Ukrainian forces. And we're proud to stand together with our value, valued allies and partners to support Ukraine's self-defense. Poland has been a leader in providing armored vehicles, in training Ukrainian forces, and in providing shelter for Ukrainian refugees. Our German hosts have announced that they will also provide a Patriot air defense system for Ukraine, complementing our own Patriot contribution. Germany will also donate martyr infantry fighting vehicles for Ukraine. And last week, Canada announced that it would provide a NASAMS air defense system to Ukraine. Now that's a major investment in Ukraine's ability to defend its skies. France also announced a significant donation of AMX-10 light tanks. And many European countries have announced their own training initiatives as a part of the EU's military assistance mission to Ukraine. These announcements, especially on air defense donations, are direct results of this contact group. And today, we will continue our important work together. Our Ukrainian friends will discuss the situation on the ground and their most urgent needs, especially air defense and armored vehicles. And then we'll discuss our complementary training initiatives. We'll also get an update on ways to energize the industrial base coming out of the National Armaments Directors Meeting. And finally, we'll hear from many of the countries here today about your ongoing support for Ukraine's self-defense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a crucial moment. Russia is regrouping, recruiting, and trying to re-equip. This is not a moment to slow down. It's a time to dig deeper. The Ukrainian people are watching us. The Kremlin is watching us. And history is watching us. So we won't let up, and we won't waver in our determination to help Ukraine defend itself from Russia's imperial aggression. Now, we're honored today to have a special guest with us, President Zelensky of Ukraine. His leadership and grace under fire have inspired the Ukrainian people and everyone in this room. He embodies the spirit of Ukraine. And as he told our Congress last month, Ukraine is alive and kicking. So, Mr. President, let me turn it over to you to share your message with this contact group. And thank you so much for joining us. Over to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Secretary. Thank you, Secretary, thank you very much for this words. Very important. And thank you for condolences and this package of supporting us. Thank you. Um, ladies and gentlemen, dear participants of the Victory Makers College, I'm grateful to you for the achieved unity, for this dialogue and cooperation format. We see the results on the battlefield in Ukraine. Thank you. On the battlefield against our common enemy. And I believe that our unity will only become stronger with every new brunch time. But do we have a lot of time? No, 
terror does not allow for discussion. The terror which burns city after city becomes insolent when I feel that the defenders of freedom run out of weapons against it. The war started by Russia does not allow delays. And I, and I can thank you hundreds of times, and it will be absolutely just and fair, given all that we have already done, but, but hundreds of thank you are not hundreds of thanks. All of us can use thousands of wars in discussions, but I cannot put wars instead of guns that are needed against Russian artillery, or instead of, instead of that, anti-aircraft missile that are needed to protect people from Russian airstrikes. And I am truly grateful to all of you for the weapons you have provided. Every unit helps to save our people from terror. But time, time remains a Russian weapon. We have to speed up. Time must become our common weapon. Just like air defense and artillery armed vehicles and tanks, which we are negotiating about with you, and which actually will make the victory. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first time I'm addressing you in such format, and I'm addressing you not as ministers of military warehouses, but as ministers of defense defense of everything that makes our world free, civilized. And I am addressing you, those who serve the values of freedom and who remember the world your parents dreamed of for you. And I am addressing you, those who themselves dream of a certain world for their children. It is the time now to protect those dreams. This is the future. I'm sure you do not want to allow such a world order where hatred will rule. Your parents would not want that kind of world for you. You would not want such a world for your children. But th this is exactly such a world order that Russia seeks for all of us, not only for Ukraine, but for the whole world. Russia wants the power to destroy nations, and they talk openly about it in Moscow. Yes, Russia wants to destroy law and universal human values, and the Russian troops, by their actions on the territory of Ukraine, are fighting just for this, in order to teach the world to hate. Russia is concentrating its forces, the last forces, trying to convince everyone that hatred can be stronger than the world. That is why you and I have to speed up. We have to do it. We must act as fast as a, as a father or mother who saves their child, as a son or daughter who sees their, their parents need immediate help. It is about what kind of world people will live in, people who dream love and hope. They hope that the freedom will be protected for Ukraine, for all of Europe, for each and every coalition's country. It is about people who believe that evil and hatred will always lose. The Kremlin must lose. Ladies, uh, ladies and gentlemen, you are strong people of powerful countries, and I know your bravery, and I appreciate everything you have done and are doing now. I encourage you to make such decisions that can deprive Russian evil of, of any power. You can start this policy today. It is in your power to make a rush time of tanks, not to bargain about different numbers of tanks, but to open a principal supply that will stop Russian evil. And we also count that your next gatherings will go down in history as Rammstein of F-16 and long-range missiles. It is in your power to guarantee such artillery and any aircraft defense that will crush terror. It is in your power to make the victory.
so may your decisions hit accurately just like our heroes on the front lines glory to all of our soldiers soldiers and sailors sergeants and foremen officers and generals and thank each and every one of you who defends freedom follow me Thank you, Mr. President. I hope you know that we will continue to stand up for Ukraine's right to defend itself, and we will continue to stand up for the principle that borders may not be redrawn by force, and we will continue to stand up for an open world of rules, rights, and responsibilities. Again, thank you for being here today. Now, as always, we're going to pause for a minute while our friends in the media depart. Thank you. <laughs>